As each of us progress through life, gathering experience and perspective, we seldom have the opportunity to recount our personal stories and impart the knowledge we've gained. Walking among us, one and all, are living legacies. Welcome to another edition of Living Legacies. I'm Tom Morrow. And today we're talking with T.G. Vallis of Oceanside. Now, if you don't know what T.G. stands for, it's uh, Theodore George. Ted, welcome to the show. Thank you, Tom. Now, you're, uh, I, I know you're a face that's uh, well known around, uh, around Oceanside. Uh, most people associate you with the uh, El Camino Country Club. You were a general manager there for many years. And then, then of course, in later years, you've been with the, uh, the Olympic uh, Resort and Hotel in the uh, in Carlsbad. That's correct, Tom. But uh, we'll talk about what you're doing uh, these days later on. But you were uh, you were born to you were a Navy brat. I was. I was born in North Island down yeah. in uh, Coronado. Yeah, back during the war. During the war, my dad was in the Navy at the time. Yeah, yeah. And uh, what the, your dad it was is kind of an interesting uh, character. He uh, he tried all four of the military services, everything but the Marine Corps. Everything but the Marine Corps. And the Marine friends of mine have, have told me that he missed a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I'll bet he did. Yeah, right. <laughs> yes, he started out in the Navy, and he was in the Coast Guard, Army Air Corps, and then, the, of course, the Air Force. Yeah, yeah he retired as a, as a top ma a top sergeant in the... Uh, uh, senior Master Sergeant in the, in the uh, Air Force. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And uh, 20, put in 26 years. Yeah. Now, he's in Florida today? No, he's down in uh, La Mesa, down yeah. in San Diego. Oh, he's still he's here. Okay. Still yeah. here. It's Charlie that's in Florida. That's correct. That's your uncle. That's you know? my older uncle. Yeah. Um, you went, uh, where was your first, uh, where was your first flight? Where, where the first time my you first, My first flight, ironically, was on the seat of a, of a, a female glider pilot down at Torrey Pines. And I, I remember a steerman, you know, they put me in, I was five years old at the time, mm. and they put me on, on her lap. And they took me off this dirt strip with a pulling us with a steerman, and uh, went airborne in that in that glider with that female pilot. And uh, I said, you know, someday I want to fly you yeah. know, this myself. I want to fly myself. It was so quiet and beautiful and just it was yeah. marvelous. But I've under I understand that flying in a glider is is a, really ex an experience because all of a sudden the noise stops and noise there's stops. nothing there's nothing right. there. You know what's holding right. us up. <laughs> And Torrey Pines is a beautiful area to fly out. Oh, yeah. Now, you went uh, to five different high schools. I did. Uh, I was a military. And only one of them in the United States. Yeah, I was, that's right. I was a military brat, and uh, we did a lot of moving around, uh, my father. And, and, uh, and so uh, we were at March Air Force Base in Riverside, and we were at uh, Williams Air Force Base in Arizona, and, uh, and then in Japan. Mm -hmm. And I, I went to... Uh, Four years of high school in Japan. And you graduated from uh, Yamato? Yamato High School. Yeah, yeah. Now, you, uh, you and I uh, went to the same school, uh, Arizona State. We went to Arizona State. In fact, we were both there probably about the same time. I graduated in seven, uh, 67. I graduated in 66. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, you look a lot younger than I do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I'd already spent four years in the Navy, though, before I got there. Uh, now, what did, what did you, uh, what was your major in? in uh, engineering. I was uh, in uh, construction engineering, and, uh, and I, I, uh, I wanted to get a degree, in, particularly in uh, highway construction. Mm -hmm. uh, but I did some copper mining. You know, I, I worked in the copper mines up in Kingman and down in Tucson, too. Yeah. Well, in 66, uh, you had been in ROTC and got your uh, second lieutenant. That's so. correct. Now, in, that, in 66, the Vietnam War was just cranking up, and uh, you, uh, you soon found yourself on, in pilot's training. What happened was uh, I, I graduated uh, with a reserve in the reserves, mm -hmm. and, and as you indicated, I was, I, I was awarded my uh, second lieutenant bars. And, uh, and I was working in a job, a freeway job, up in Kingman, Arizona. And my wife and I were engaged to be married. And I came home one day, and the lady that I was rooming aboard with told me, uh, Tad, 
And I said, Sadie, it's Ted. And she said, that's what I said, Ted. <laughs> she said, well, you got a registered letter from the United States Air Force. And I said, what? And uh, I opened it up, and it was called to active duty, report to pilot training. Ironically, it was to report to pilot training at Reese Air Force Base, Texas. However, uh, my wife, my wife-to-be, Sherry, was, uh, was at Arizona State University. She was a co-ed at Arizona State University. That's where we met. And I wanted very much for her to finish school. So I shot a letter off to him, and I said, hey, I'll, uh, I'll, um, I don't mind being called to active duty, but can I get transferred to uh, Williams Air Force Base for pilot training rather than, uh, rather than uh, Reese Air Force Base, Texas? And that's in Chandler, which is about six miles south of that's correct. Arizona State. Yeah. And ironically, I had gone to Chandler High School for one semester before we moved to Japan. We were also stationed at uh, Williams Air Force Base, mm -hmm. and and I graduated from pilot training ten years to the day from the day I graduated from the eighth grade at the same base. <laughs> oh, that's something. <laughs> well, now you uh, you bounced around to several different uh, training bases before you uh, went overseas. Now, what what kind of plane were you being trained on? Uh, I I initially I got I, uh, when I was in college. Uh, they paid for my private pilot's license. Mm -hmm. and so I got my private pilot's license at Sky Harbor Airport, which you know yeah, all about. Right. And, uh, and, and then uh, uh, I went on, when I went into pilot training, uh, because I already had my private pilot's license, we, we uh, flew out of Casa Grande in T-41s, which were just... Trainers. Uh, trainers. Yeah. They were uh, single prop trainers, just to find out whether we could fly the plane or not. Well, because I already had my private pilot's license, I only got six hours out at, uh, before they soloed me out at uh, Casa Grande. Mm -hmm. Then we went into the T-37, which was a side-by-side -side trainer, mm -hmm. and it was jet. It was a Cessna jet. And then we went into the tandem T-38, which was a beautiful aircraft, and, uh, and it was supersonic. Mm -hmm. And so uh, when you got to the T-38, you know, you we, lost, we lost very few students because they'd put a lot of money into us by the time they got yeah. us into the T-38. Yeah. yeah, then you knew that this is for me, huh? Oh, I loved it. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, you know those mountains and everything around Phoenix, the Superstition Mountains yeah. and everything. All of our air work was usually over the Superstition Mountain chain. And, uh, you know, whenever I'd, whenever I'd get that uh, a, a solo mission, I would take the furthest... Uh, training area that I could get that yeah, day, and yeah. I'd go out there and I'd low level it and go as fast as I can along the cliffs of the super. There's no place to land there, though. No, no, <laughs> not if you had trouble. Yeah. Well, now you uh, basically uh, it was F4s that you ended up with. I did uh, out of pilot training. I went into. I started out in the back seat of an F F4, and uh, that's one of the reasons I went down to Davis Monthon for radar training, and mm -hmm. uh, and then I started, as you indicated, I started moving around to different bases. I went to radar school at Tucson. I went to Sea Survival down in Miami at uh, Homestead Air Force Base down mm -hmm. in Miami, Key Biscayne, mm -hmm. uh, and then I went clear across the United States to Spokane for land survival, and then I ended up at George Air Force Base in Victorville. One Where, of the garden spots for me. Yeah, well, you know, <laughs> the, when they say high desert, they mean high desert. Oh, yeah, it gets cold there in it the wintertime. Yeah, cold in the winter and hot in the summer. And, <laughs> uh, and I uh, graduated uh, as the outstanding pilot in my class at, at uh, George Air Force Base in, at, in F-4 Phantoms. How did you end up in Korea? That was, uh, if you'll recall... There was an EC-121 that was shot down off the coast of Korea. It was a radar Korea. picket plane. It was a radar picket plane, unarmed, totally unarmed. Yeah, this is a big constellation. Constellation. Lockheed constellation. Lockheed yeah. uh, with the three tails. Yeah. And, uh, and, and it was doing uh, some work off the coast of North Korea, and a MiG came up behind it and shot it out of the sky. Now, ironically, uh, Nixon was a senator when the Pueblo was captured, which was a year or two before that. And uh, and he raised holy hell, you know, uh, about them re releasing the crew from the Pueblo. So now Nixon was president of the United States, mm -hmm. and this EC-121 gets shot down. And we were supposed to go TDY to Bitburg, Germany. And all of a sudden, we got called into the 
uh, ready room at, at our squadron early. And I thought, boy, they're really playing this up on this departure to Bitburg, Germany. We were going over to Bitburg, Germany for six weeks, six weeks of training. And the next thing I know, I go into a room and they call the room to attention. And, uh, and the squadron commander comes out and says that we're leaving the next day for Kunsan, Korea. And uh, an EC-121 got shot down off the coast of North Korea and, and we're deploying right away. We flew and, and, it, and we're not to tell our wives or anybody where we're going or why we're going. And so I went home and just told my wife, she thought I was going to Germany. And uh, the next day, uh, we departed uh, 7 o'clock the next morning. This is from George? From George Air Force. No, no, this was from uh, Seymour Johnson in North Carolina. Uh -huh. Oh, God. And, and we flew in, in clear across the United States and air to air refueled all the way across the United States because they didn't want us to land at any, any uh, bases and tip anybody in our hand. Uh -huh. We flew cr clear across the United States and landed in Hawaii and air to air refueled all the way. So that was a long haul. And then a longer haul was from Hickam Air Force Base in Hawaii to uh, Guam. And then we spent the night in Guam. And then we went from Guam into Kunsan, Korea. And it was, and it was the middle of the winter. And was, there was snow on the ground. And, uh, and we got to uh, Kunsan. And they loaded bombs and weapons on our, on our planes as soon as we arrived. And, uh, and then uh, we were there. Uh, for some time, you know, before they didn't ended. do anything. No, no. In fact, it was funny because uh, we were getting bored. By the second week, we were getting bored, and and we had a quick draw contest in the bar one night with our thirty-eight caliber uh, revolvers, and a major shot off his big toe. And so <laughs> then they took all of our revolvers away from us and only gave it to us when we were sitting on on uh, alert. Oh, you guys. <laughs> well, you uh, ended up, and we we got to move along because we're running out of time. You in you ended up in uh, Vietnam. I did. How many miss missions did you fly in Vietnam? Uh, over 190 missions uh, in, in uh, over um, North Vietnam, Laos, and a few in Cambodia. Got kind of dicey at times. Very dicey. Yeah. We, uh, uh, my college roommate and fraternity brother from Arizona State. Yeah. Uh, Brian Seek, uh, he saw me off on the 22nd of December, and he got shot down and captured on the 5th of July. Yeah. And, uh, he was in for quite a while. He was. Yeah. yeah. Now, when you, uh, did you, you made uh, captain? I made captain. Uh, I was a captain when I went over to Vietnam. Okay, uh, all right. So I was a first lieutenant in pilot training. And the reason I was is because I had a year and a half of reserves mm -hmm. before I had gone into pilot training onto active duty. Where were you uh, stationed in Vietnam? Uh, Karat Royal Thai Air Force Base in uh, the center of Thailand. Okay, you were in Thailand. Okay. Yes. All right. Flying out of Thailand over Laos, North Vietnam, and Cambodia. Uh -huh. uh, where is that from uh, Bangkok? It's about uh, 130 miles north of Bangkok. Okay. All right. Um, now, you, were, you uh, received uh, a few uh, decorations. I did, Tom. I received 12 air medals and uh, two distinguished flying crosses. Okay. Did you uh, consider uh, making the Air Force a career? You know, uh, I always say I put in 26 years with my dad. Yeah. And, uh, and one of the things, Tom, uh, that uh, made me decide not to make it a career and to eventually go to work with my uncle in the resort business was because uh, I got called over to Vietnam when my son was 18 days old. Mm -hmm. And that was tough, leaving a, a, a little guy 18 days old. I, I settled Sherry and, and Eric, my oldest son, uh, in Texas, mm -hmm. and where she could continue her, her college career. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then I shoved off to Vietnam. Uh, you know, I recognized that it was a necess necessity at the time. That's what they paid me for. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but it was tough leaving him. So then I went over to Vietnam and, uh, or to Thailand. And when I returned, of course, he was a year and 18 days old. Yeah. And I didn't want my children to, 
to go through what we did where we were moving from base to base and mm -hmm. where I went to four different high schools, Tom. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, that, that was tough. Did you stay in the reserves or? Uh... I did for a while. Uh, I remained in the reserves uh, when I, when I uh, mm -hmm. discharged. And, and, uh, well, t uh, tell me how, uh, how you ended up with uh, Ted, Ted Vallis. I, uh, uh, I had, when they, uh, they changed an assignment on me, uh, I was supposed to fly, I was supposed to go to Fort Walton Beach, Florida. Nice assignment, by the way, down in the Gold oh, Coast yeah. and the yeah, yeah. Pensacola area. Yeah. And uh, I was supposed to go to Hurlbut Air Force Base at Eglin and fly uh, OV tents. And, uh, and it was a good assignment. A lot mm -hmm. of medals, you know, it was high risk, you know, but, but you controlled the air war. Mm -hmm. uh, the OV-10s would call in the airstrikes of the Phantoms or the F-105s or, mm -hmm. or even some Navy uh, pilots that were doing their bombing or mm -hmm. strafing. And uh, I was supposed to go down there and train in an OV-10. And I was excited about the assignment. And I'd taken my wife's medical records. She was pregnant, pregnant with uh, Eric at the time. And I'd taken her medical records. I'd rented an apartment and everything. And then when I got back one day, they said they changed my assignment and I had to go to Southeast Asia right away. Well, that was tough because yeah. Sherry was uh, quite pregnant at the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, they did delay me one month before I went over, but that was just for the birth of my child. Mm -hmm. And then when Eric was 18 days old, I was off to the war. Mm -hmm. So I decided that I just wasn't going to make it a career. So I immediately put a call in to uh, my uncle, who I'd been a, I'd been a lifeguard uh, summers from college at the uh, El Camino at El Camino Country Club. Yeah, and so I called my uncle and I said, you know, you have any positions open? At the time, he had just purchased uh, Whispering Palms Country Club down in Rancho Santa Fe, mm -hmm. and he said, yes. He said, I'm ready for you to come to work for me, and I said, okay, I'm going to put in my paperwork to discharge when I return, because my my five year commitment was up. Ted is, is such a taskmaster to work for. Oh, hardly that. <laughs> he's, a, he's a great guy. He's a great guy. I've, I've enjoyed working for him. I, I, I put in 40 years with him. I was going to say, you, you've, uh, you've got about four decades uh, going there. That's right. Now, you, uh, where'd you st start out at? Uh, at uh, Whis or did you start at Whispering Palms or El Camino? I, he had me on a training program down at Whispering Palms, mm -hmm. and uh, and you know I, I did everything. We were building another nine holes. Uh, we had we had eighteen holes down at Whispering Palms, and we were building a uh, another nine holes for twenty seven holes, and tennis courts and a hotel. Mm -hmm. Well, my background was construction, so I was kind of excited about that. Mm -hmm. So uh, I went out and I shaped greens. I put in watering system, and so you and, learned the business from learned the, the business. Up. And I'll never forget it was. The year, uh, it was the year of the Olympics. Uh, 84? Uh, no, it was uh, 74. Uh -huh. 74, is that right? Yeah. And uh, I used to shave when I was going down to Rancho Santa Fe, and I'd wait for the sun to be in the mirror so I could shave. And I'd <laughs> shave on those back roads going down to Rancho Santa Fe. And I'd get the coffee on for the whole crew, uh -huh. you know, uh, so that they wouldn't say, oh, here comes the boss's nephew, you know. Yeah. I, uh, I'd get the coffee going before anybody else got there. I suppose that th there was probably a little bit of that. Uh, they thought you were getting uh, oh, yeah. special treatment. Yeah. Well, you, uh, uh, you, Ted got you back into the Vallis Air Force, didn't he? He did. Uh, <laughs> so explain he, about that. Yeah. Well, uh, one day a friend of his, Jim Vitito, uh, came to us and wanted to do some publicity photos, and they wanted to use Ted in the publicity photos, and they were asked, if I could get permission to land some Hughes helicopters at the golf course. And uh, I said, well, I'll talk to him. So I asked Ted. Ted said, yeah, I don't have a problem with that, but make sure we get a ride. So the uh, corporate pilots from Hughes helicopters gave Ted a ride in a Hughes 500 and gave me a ride in a Hughes 300, mm -hmm. you know, for doing these publicity photos that they had taken. And so I went into breakfast one day and... Uh, and he says, listen, don't tell your aunt, but uh, I bought one of those helicopters. I, I said, Ted, that little helicopter that I flew in, I said, you know, you could go faster to L.A. in a car on a windy day, you know. And he says, no, no, I bought the jet helicopter. I said, you know, at the time it was about 380000 And he didn't know how to fly, did he? He didn't, he didn't have a license. <laughs> So he said, well, I'm going to send you, I'm going to use some of your VA, you know, and I'm going to learn how to fly the jet. And he said, I'm going to put you in the recip and then, 
and then get you into the jet helicopter. And so we both ended up with our jet helicopter licenses, and I went on to get my corporate license. Well, now, uh, f after flying those F-4s, uh, flying a helicopter, was, uh, that was a different, that was really a, a, a tough uh, change, wasn't it? It was, and that's one of the reasons uh, I opted to go in to, to take some time in the, in the RECEP helicopter mm -hmm. first, is to unlearn some of the things that I'd learned in, uh, in flying. I had a 172 over at Palomar at the time. Uh -huh. My father and I had a 172. A Cessna. Cessna. Yeah. And, uh, but, uh, but it was always gone on a trip, and I never, never used to get to fly it, except when it was bad weather. Well, mm -hmm. the, the helicopters uh, really helped uh, you and, and, and Ted out quite a bit because you had by then bought the uh, uh, the Barbara Worth uh, uh, Resort in right. uh, in Holt Imperial Hill. Valley Country Club. We, and na that, we named it Imperial Valley. Yeah, Country and then Club. Uh, then Palm Springs. We had Olympic Resort in Palm Springs. And uh, a lot of driving back and forth, so the helicopters really helped. It was a it was a uh, it was a re realistic tool. Well, part of the problem, Tom, was you know my uncle got a lot of tickets going to El Centro, <laughs> and uh, so. And, and, and likewise, he was getting more tickets going over to Palm Springs. So it, it, it was a thing where he was probably due to lose his license. Yeah. So uh, we got the helicopter. And, you know, ironically, we could see all three properties in one day because we would go over to Imperial Valley, mm -hmm. conduct our business in the morning, have breakfast, and conduct our business there, go over to... Uh, 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 to rent, uh, I'm sorry, to Palm Springs. Mm -hmm to uh, Olympic Resort over there and have lunch and then mm -hmm. be back, you know, in time for me to do well, now, things at, at El Camino or at Whispering Palms. Now, you ended up general manager of, uh, of uh, El Camino. Now, did, were you ever general manager of Whispering Palms? I was for, uh, I, was, I was general manager down there for about a year and a half. And then you moved up to El Camino. Moved up to El Camino because I built my home. I, when I built my home in 74, on the golf course at El Camino, uh, Ted offered me the opportunity. He had a, uh, a manager that moved back east, mm -hmm. and he offered me the job at El Camino. Well, you were at El, uh, El Camino until he sold, what was it, about 92, 93? That's correct. And, uh, and then, then the I, stayed on, I stayed on with the people that purchased uh, the facility. Uh, a cup, um, about a year, year and a half mm -hmm. with them, and uh, and then uh, I moved over to uh, Olympic Resort. Yeah. And you were you were Olympic for up until it was sold this That's last right. year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, that uh, you really learned the uh, the resort business from the ground. I up. did. You know, I'll never forget down at uh, when I was down at Whispering Palms. I would be edging around trees or putting in uh, <laughs> sprinkler lines, yeah. you know, or night watering. Yeah, now that's a that's a gem. By by the I, time you were doing that, nobody accused you of being uh, getting any favor. No, no, not at all. And then I and then all of a sudden I would see a jet pitch out, you know, that was landing at Miramar, and I'd say, "What am I doing here?" You know. <laughs> but it wasn't very long before, uh, yeah. you know. I, well, now tell me a little bit about what you're doing now. Well, we've started four businesses. Uh, the umbrella business is uh, U.S. International Consultants. Mm -hmm. uh, it's located over on. El Camino Real in, mm -hmm. uh, in Carlsbad, and ironically, it's just a hoot and a holler from uh, Olympic Resort, so yeah. we can still drive by and, and, and wave at, at, at our old haunt at yeah. uh, Olympic Resort. Uh, but uh, U.S. International Consultants has four businesses. Uh, we do expense reduction analysis for, for uh, corporations from $5 million to $250 million in mm -hmm. income. Uh, we just work on their overhead expenses. That's mm -hmm. all we analyze and, wor and work to, to save them money on. And then we have uh, uh, Billboard Buggy, which is these advertising trucks with yeah. rolling advertising. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's an yeah. interesting place. It is. And then we have uh, uh, Ducks franchise for uh, 10 du Ducks franchises for cleaning uh, air ducts, mm -hmm. uh, indoor air specialists. Uh, and we do that all over the county of San Diego. And then the last one, uh, and, and besides actually uh, consulting, uh, is uh, Business Alliance Incorporated. And, and what we do there is we put people into franchises. Mm -hmm. And uh, we represent 250 franchise companies. We've run out of time, TG. Okay. 
and it's, uh, we could have spent another another 30 minutes talking about your exploits uh, in the military, but uh, I appreciate you coming in and sharing your life with us. We've been talking with T.G. Vallis of Oceanside, and I'm Tom Morrow. Join us here again next time on Living Legacies. <laughs>